You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. LSU's regular season might be over, but that just means uh, recruiting season and all the like are heating up. The portal window opens up on Monday. Good time to check in with Shay Dixon. Of course, from on three, the Bengal Tiger. Shady, we appreciate you, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Matt. Hey, man, it's our pleasure. Um, let me start with the news, the uh, literally big news, of uh, Sean Washington committing um, on the defensive line. Uh, Juco, give us the backstory here, Shay, if you would. Yeah, this is a kid who was committed to LSU at one point in time back in uh, the Orgeron era, coming out of New Orleans at Warren Easton, uh, then decommitted. Um, and not it was before Coach O got let go, so decommitted and ended up signing with Georgia and was part of a national championship team and entered the portal after just one year and did something that I think will be more popular. This is a Shea prediction here. Okay. Will be more popular as we go forward in the portal. So. Each year we hear about, what, these thousands of kids, right? However many, 2,000 kids, 1,800 enter the portal. Well, there's only so many places you can go. And if you're at Georgia and you're a talented player, you how far, you know you can't go up from there. You can go to a band, you can go to an LSU and all that. You can you know, make a lateral move, but those teams have to have a need. And he entered last spring after Georgia got done wrapping up winning a national championship. So his options were even more limited. So he said, which now I'm seeing a lot more kids do is I'll just go Juco for a year. It's not a great thing. I'll be able to leave in December and enroll in another school. But instead of dropping down to a lower level and grabbing a scholarship at a four year university, now I'll just go play for a year at Juco, put more film out there and pick up more offers. And that's just what Sean Washington did. And LSU, Bama State, all these schools came calling with interest, and uh, he spent the year at East Mississippi. They are now set next weekend to play Hutchinson in the JUCO semifinals, and then he could be playing for a JUCO championship. So uh, I like taking the route uh, of kind of betting on yourself, saying, hey, look, I'll take JUCO for a year. I'll start. I won't have to sit, and then I can come and back around and explore more options. And he had a lot more options and settled in on LSU after visiting this past weekend. And that was kind of always the feel. I had my own three RPM pick on him to land at LSU once they had offered him again, once he was in Juco, but um, a big defensive tackle. We're talking about a, a kid who's a 300 plus pounder who can play the nose, can play the DT position. And one thing that I like, which I think that any coach and you know, Brian Keller, or anyone else would like is, at Warren Easton, they went to two state titles when he was on that team at the latter part of his high school career. He goes straight to Georgia and wins a national championship. He's now one year in JUCO. They win in next weekend. Mm. He's playing for a JUCO national championship. So if you're talking about kids who understand the mentality of, hey, here's what it takes in a locker room to buy in uh, to be on a championship team, he's seen it at the high school level. He's seen it at Georgia. He's seeing it now at JUCO. And then you bring him to LSU, and he's not out of his element. He understands what it takes to, hey, look, if we're going to reach the ultimate level, this is the type of commitment you have to have. I love the point. Shay, walk us through the numbers here on, on the defensive line, on the interior defensive line. In terms of recruiting or who they kind of, yeah, which so, direction do you want me to go? So Jordan Jefferson's out. We'll wait on decisions yeah. on Mekhi Wingo, Mason Smith. Uh, there you and, go. And, Jaco I, and Jacoby and Guillory is, as well. I think that's where you start, right? Because the first two seasons, remember when Brian Kelly took over, the entire narrative was, look, you're taking over a team, yes, to tell a shoe. They've got 38, 39 scholarship guys. Like, you're way below the 85-man limit. This is a multi-year rebuild. These past two years, they've taken double-digit transfers with ease because they could. I mean, if you feel good about a guy, the depth, whatever it is, take him. I mean, we've got spots is the mentality. Now they don't. You're, you've now built up a roster to where you have to manage, okay, who's leaving? Who's going to hit the, you know, for the NFL or the portal? Who are we signing? Right now they have 26 signees. And then how many guys do we want out of the portal? And Brian Kelly has maintained that he wants under 10. He has said that publicly. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, I'd like to be under 10 guys. I've heard, you know, between five and 10. 
So for the first time in the Kelly era, they're really having to manage that. And Matt, I've called around and talked to numerous sources close to the program in the past few days. And the first thing out of everyone's mouth is retention. And that means, can you get Mason Smith to come back? Can you get Makai Wingo to come back? And you mentioned Guillory. Those are guys who started for you. So if you get them to come back again, suddenly your D-line depth is a lot better than it was, you know, had they all bail and you're starting over again and hoping you can, you know, move one of these guys from second team to first team. and You hit on someone in the portal and you're playing that whole game again because you're not wanting to start a true freshman defensive lineman at, at D-tackle right now when you're trying to win the SEC. So, Retention, retention, retention. That's the name of the game right now. And I think when you talk about positions of need, um, and you, you know, corner is obviously one uh, that jumps out, but they're not like they don't have a bunch of veterans there that they're losing at corner. All those guys, most of them have a lot of eligibility left. Yeah. It's the DT position that I look at and say, boy, what can they do with guys like you just mentioned, Wingo, Smith, Guillory? How can you convince guys like that to come back for one more year? Because for me, that's bigger than any high school commit you're going to get. That's bigger than any unknown out of the portal that hasn't even entered yet. You know, that yeah. we, we don't even know what the portal holds. So right now it is all about convincing those types of guys to say, hey, look, stay one more year, up your NFL stock, and then see what happens from there. Jay, do you have any lean on those guys, Smith, Wingo, Guillory? You know, I mean, you asked me three years ago what Mason Smith is doing. He's <laughs> right. out. He's right. five stars, number one player, and losing he's all this, but I think the reality of it is he missed the whole year and then he really didn't play, you know, back to any sort of standard that he hold himself to until the latter part of this year. So I would hope that he would lean towards coming back. Wingo is a guy I think I had thought at least for a long time would go. Now he got injured mid season. Does that affect anything? Would he like to say, Hey, I may not be fully healthy for the combine and maybe it is in my best interest to come back. You know, I don't know what the extent of his surgery is, but does he, you know, sit out the spring and then he has one more season? Um, so I, I can't tell you for sure which way both are going, but I don't think either of them are uh, done deal leaving. I could see a world where they could get him back. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe more likely Smith than Wingo, but that's just a guess of mine. All right, he's on Twitter at Shay Dixon on three. The Bengal Tiger portal opens on Monday. Shay, we talked about interior defensive line. Are there any other positions where? You you know or think LSU will be targeting um, right when the portal window opens. It won't surprise me to see them with a you know try to get DB addressed. And look, they took a bunch of corners last year. And in in theory, if Zy Alexander could be healthy again, and if you have Sage Ryan back, and now you've got Ashton Stamps and Toviano, and you're bringing in some other corners, like that position group is in a much better place than it was when it started this year or at least when we got through the midway point and realized, hey, look, your best transfer is hurt. One of your other transfer corners got hurt in preseason, and two more basically not even at practice. Like, you're in no man's land now and playing true freshman in Sage Ryan. But Brian Kelly talked about it. I agree. I mean, Stamps and Toviano getting that experience is going to help them going into next year. Like, that's what you want. You want to be developing these guys that you felt good about coming out of high school into guys who are the starters for you. And obviously we'll see if Sage being back and does he play corner again or what happens there. Could they take a portal guy? But I would lean more towards safety just because Andre Sam's done with college. Major Burns is on the back of the end of his college career, obviously. And then we haven't seen much beyond them. I mean, we saw a little bit of Ryan Yates and a little bit of Jordan Allen, but other than that, not a ton. So wouldn't surprise me if they hit safety, obviously, D tackles a position that we're going to look at and uh, be keen on. And then I think that a lot depends on retention. Like Malik Neighbors is going to go pro. Brian Thomas will go pro. I think people are forgetting about Kyron Lacey. Like that's a guy you've got to get to come back. You don't need him to think I can be a third rounder or I could be a fourth rounder and that's good enough. And I'm going to go. I mean, get him back and be the featured guy or the number two or whatever it is. And your receiver room gets a boost and maybe you take one transfer receiver and, Look, we saw what two guys that transferred this year, both from Louisiana that didn't go to LSU, Keon Coleman and Trey Harris. If those guys aren't on Florida State and Ole Miss, LSU beats Ole Miss if Trey Harris isn't on their team. He yeah. single-handedly won that game, basically. And Keon Coleman goes out and what, put up three touchdowns on LSU. So you can see what a difference even one player at receiver 
couldn't make out of the portal. So I'd look at that, and then this is not an anti-Garrett Nussmeyer statement. This is a reality statement. You've got to look at the portal for a quarterback, right? Yes. Because you're one snap away from Ricky Collins, whose only career experience is, is two passes and some handoffs against Grambling State, I guess it was, uh, as your starter. If Garrett Nussmeyer goes down at any point or can't play or just tweaks his ankle and is out for a few series in a key SEC game, you know, whatever it is, that's not the position you want to be in. So I would have to think that they're going to at least look through the portal to say, hey, is there a guy out there that we could bring in that we'd feel good about being a backup or who? I mean, I don't know, winning a job, whatever it might be. But I, you can't go into next year and have Nussmeyer and then no experience behind him. Could not agree more. Uh, it's the, the tool is there to use. Use it. Uh, get, get depth at the most important position, of course. Uh, before you go, Shay. I opened the show today talking a little bit about Corey Raymond being fired at Florida. I, I preface it with this, so I'll preface this question to you. LSU has a cornerbacks coach right now with Robert Steeples. If that job comes open, and I'm assuming, as I'm sure everyone is, there are going to be defensive staff changes, would it make sense to bring Corey Raymond back to LSU? I would, and I don't care. Many people disagree with me. But if there is an opening at that position and Corey Raymond is available among the list of you know, the options out there the pool of candidates 100 percent. and i know people many people are, i run a message board i hear it all uh you're on radio you see the live chats you get the calls well he left the corner room in shambles no they had 38 players there was a lot more rooms in shambles than the corner room and they went 500 and back-to-back seasons it was very tough to recruit when it felt like a dead man walking in that final year of they're not going to keep, they're going to have their first losing season since 1999 when Jerry Donardo was replaced by Saban. So there was a lot more going on there than, oh, the cornerback room was shallow. Like, yeah, of course, Dwight McGlother and all these guys transferred out. Their coach wasn't going to be there anymore and the whole staff was turning over. So I don't look back on that as some negative period. And I more so think, hey, look, I remember three stars like Jalen Mills, Cordell Flott, Jay Ward. They sure did play a lot of valuable football for LSU, let alone the high-profile guys that he got to come here. So, yes, if there was any shakeup at corner and Corey Raymond's available and I'm an LSU head coach, I'm 100% giving him a call. Uh, he is Shay Dixon on 3 The Bengal Tiger on Twitter at Shay Dixon. Shay, you're the best, man. Always appreciate a couple minutes. Thank you. Anytime, Matt. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.